Okay, so this lesson is on interest and we have three kinds of interest to talk about today. The first one at the top of the screen is simple interest. And then the second one is in the middle on the left, compounded interest. And the third one is continuously compounded. And through the lesson, I'll talk about the difference, the differences in those. For this very first one, simple interest, I want you to imagine that you have $100 and you put it in a savings account and the bank tells you that you're going to earn 1% interest over the course of a year. So what that would mean is at the end of the year, you earn $1 because that's what 1% of 100 is. And then you have $101 at the end of the year. A second year goes by, you earn another 1% on that $100. So you've earned another dollar. So at the end of two years, you have $102, right? So the interest is calculated one time each year and it's calculated based on the original amount of 100 that you put in. So for that kind of scenario, we have these two formulas and we're gonna spend a few moments just talking about what the variables stand for. So on this first one, I equals PRT, I stands for interest. P stands for principal with an AL at the end, not an LE. And that's your starting amount. R stands for rate. And before you can do math on a rate, so the rate in the original example I gave you was the 1%. Now we don't do math on the percent number. We do math on the converted percent number when you do that thing where you divide by 100 because when you say 1%, it's one per 100. That's what percent means per 100. So 1%, if you wanna do math on that, you convert it to 0.01. And then you can do calculations with it. So let's take a little tangent and talk about that. Let's say that your problem that you're working on gives you a rate of 5.65%. Before you can plug it into the formula, you need to divide by 100. What that effectively does is takes your decimal and moves it two places to the left, giving you 0 0.0565. And that's the number you do in the formula to do math calculations. But then let's say you're solving a problem and you're solving for R and you get R equals 0 0.0565. Well, before you finish out your answer, you want to convert it back to a percentage form by doing the opposite, which is multiplying by 100. So then you could say it's 5.65%. So keep that in mind when you're doing calculations with the rate. And then the last variable is T, which stands for time. And it always is represented in years for the formula. Now your problem information might not be in years, but when you go plug it into the formula, you have to convert it to years. And so if you go over to the right side of the page where it says helpful tips, that very first chart, this is gonna help us convert whatever we're given to years. So if, so if you look at number one, it says plugging in for T when T is not in years. And then it says you use a fraction. And on the left side, if the time you're given is in months and you're trying to go make a fraction with that, the denominator for your fraction is gonna be 12 because there are 12 months in a year. If your problem is in days, your denominator is gonna be 365. And if it's in weeks, it's going to be 52. So just as a little example here, if time is seven months, then the T value that you would use for your formula is seven over 12. So it's a portion of a year. You wouldn't put seven in for T, 
because that would mean seven years. So that's why we need to be able to know how to make fractions for time if time is in something different than years. And then let's go back and talk about the second simple interest formula, <clears throat> the A equals P times one plus RT. A stands for accumulated value. All right, so this is the total value. And basically it's the accumulated value is the P, your principal, what you started with, plus the interest accumulated based on time and the rate. So in my original example, um, at the end of a year, I had $101. That's my accumulated value. It's the principal of 100 plus the $1 that I earned in interest. And I wanna show you how this formula that I just wrote down um, is the same as the original one of P times one plus RT, right? So if you notice the I, we already have this, formula for I, I equals PRT. So I can replace that I with PRT. And then there's a GCF of P in both of those terms. So I'm going to divide that out. And in the first term, when you do P divided by itself, you're left with one. And in the second term, after dividing out P, you're left with RT. And there's our formula, okay? And now before we talk about the other kinds of interest, we're gonna to go to the homework practice sheet and do two problems with simple interest um, while it's fresh in our mind. So we're gonna go um, over here. This is your practice problems. And we're gonna look at number nine. What I want you to do right now is pause your video, go through this word problem. And anytime you're given a piece of information, I want you to decide which variable that is. And I want you to label it with that variable, right? So it's either A, I, P, R, or T. That's all the variables. Pause the video now, spend some time with it, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, here's what I'm hoping you came up with. Um, he borrowed $260. That's the P value, the starting amount. Three weeks later is our time, but it's not in years, so we have to make a fraction. It's three weeks over 52, because there's 52 weeks in a year. And he paid off the note for 297.50. That's an A value, that's the accumulated value. It's what he started with, plus whatever interest he was charged. And then the last question, what was the annual interest rate on this loan? So this is what the problem is asking us to find. So this is our unknown. So it stays a variable and it's the rate. So I'm gonna use R. So since I have an A value, I'm going to go with that second formula. That was the accumulated value. So here it is. And I'm just gonna plug stuff in, okay? A is 297.50. P is 260, parentheses one plus R, which I don't know, so it stays R, times T, which we're using three over 52. And now our goal is to solve for R. What I like to do anytime there's a constant being multiplied by something in parentheses, like, like in this particular example, you could distribute the 260, which is completely appropriate, and wonderful and beautiful and it would work. But I like to just divide it off to begin with. It makes my numbers smaller. So then what that's gonna give me on the left is 1.14 and on the right is one plus three over 52 R. And even though this looks kind of complicated, there's a fraction and a decimal this is really just a plain old algebra equation. You're trying to isolate R. Right now it's being multiplied by something and added with something. 
and we always undo the addition part first. So I'm going to subtract that one from both sides. And then this is what my next step looks like. 0 0.14 equals 3 over 52 R. And then from here, you divide by the coefficient. You divide both sides by 3 over 52, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Um, alternatively, you could do this in two steps. If you see 3 over 52, you could just multiply both sides by 52 first to cancel that out. But then you would have 3R left, and then you would just divide by 3. So I'm just going to do all that in one step, which, by the way, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And then when you're multiplying 52 thirds times 0.14, if you have a really basic calculator that you're using right now, remember, whenever you're working with multiplication of fractions, you multiply across the top first, you get that answer, like you hit enter on your calculator. Then you divide by multi the multiplication of the denominator. So in your calculator, what you would want to do is 52 times 0 0.014, enter get that number and then divide by three. That, that way you know you're getting the answer you're intending to get and not messing up order of operations with your calculator by entering stuff a different way. And so the answer here is about 2.5. But remember, we need to convert this back to percentage form and we do that by multiplying by 100. So the very last step is 2.5 times 100, which is 250%. That is the rate that this person's being charged to pay off their loan. And the next one we're going to try is number 11. This one's not a story problem. It's just you're given your values and you're going to plug it in and try and solve. And since it has an A in it, we're going to go ahead and use this A formula again. So take a minute, pause the video, try number 11 all by yourself, and then come back when you're ready. So plugging in gives us 2,500 equals P, which is going to stay a variable because that's what we're looking for, times 1 plus R. R is given to us in percent form. So to convert it so that we can do math on it, we divide by 100, which means moving the decimal two places to the left. <laughs> So we need to use 0 0.0625. And then times T, T is not in years, it's in months. So we make a fraction and we put 12 in the denominator for the number of months in a year and multiply by 31 over 12. Now this is kind of busy. Here's what I would want you to do in your calculator. Inside the parentheses, you still need to follow order of operations. So that means this multiplication first. You would do 0 0.0625 times 31, enter and get that number. Then do the division by 12. Once you have those things, you add one. And then here's what you would have in the next step. 2,500 equals P times 1.16, And now you just divide both sides by that number to get P by itself. So P is approximately 2,152. And remember, P stands for your beginning amount in dollars. So we need a dollar sign. So we did, that's two simple interest examples. Now let's go back and talk about the next formula. 
So right here, when I first tar started talking about simple interest, notice where it says it's calculated once. Compound interest is it's calculated many times and the interest you earn is added to your original value and now that becomes your new principal balance. So it's compounded. So take my original example of $100. Let's say it's compounded twice in a year, okay? What that would mean is that after six months, I would earn a dollar. And that dollar is added to the 100. Now my new principal balance is 101. So at the end of the year, when it calculates the interest the second time at the 1%, now it's gonna calculate the interest on 101. Not the 100, but the 101. And then that interest will be added in and that becomes my new principal balance for the next time. So that's what we mean by compounded. And then this is the formula for that. And this is where, so you'll notice this is an exponential equation. So we're gonna start using the exponential and log skills that we've been working on. So it's A equals P parentheses one plus R over N, close parentheses, and then it's N times T and that's an exponent, the N times T. And the new variable here, all the other variables are the same. The new one is N and N stands for the number of times compounded in a year. So T is still defined in years. And then over to the right is a table for how to know what N should be depending on what your problem says. So if your problem says it's compounded annually, your N value that you'd plug in is one. Semi-annually means twice, quarterly four times, monthly 12, weekly is 52, and daily is 365. So let's go do one example of continuously compounded. We're gonna do number 23, which is the second page of your practice problems. So we've got our formula here. And I want you to pause the video and just plug in all the information from 23 into that formula. You're welcome to keep it paused and, and try and figure out the whole thing, or you can just come back after the plug-in step um, if you're not prepared to go forward. So whichever works better. So plugging in for A, the 12, the 129,500 equals P, which is 90,000 times one plus R over N. So R is given to me in percent form. So I need to convert it first by dividing by 100, which moves the decimal two places to the left. So I'm putting in 0 0.07125 for R, which is divided by N, and N comes from the compounded weekly. There are 52 weeks in a year, so that's how many times it's gonna be calculated. And then outside the parentheses is the exponent N times T. So N again was um, 52, and T is just gonna be T because that's what we're looking for. The problem says find T, so T stays a variable. Um, now this looks kind of crazy. This is a little bit high maintenance equation. Um, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna combine two things in this first step. Actually a few things. The first thing is I like to divide off the 90,000 right here. It's way easier than distributing it through. And then inside the parentheses, I want you to do the um, fraction first. So calculate that 0 0.07125 divided by 52. Be sure to hit enter on your calculator and then add one to it. So I'm combining all that in the next step, those things I just said. 
and then that gives me 1.4389 on the left. And then 1.00137 to the 52T. Now our goal is to solve for T, but right now it's in the power position. So we do the inverse operation of exponential, which is log. And we've been using the lasso trick to quickly convert from exponential to log form. So the lasso means you start with the base, which is here. You loop around to the opposite side. So the base is on the right. So I'm going to loop around to the left and end at the exponent. So here's what that's going to give me, log base 1.00137 of 1.4389 equals 52t. Now, that base is not 10 or E. So your regular calculators with log aren't going to handle that well. I'm going to show you a minute in a minute how to do that in Desmos. Or if you have a graphing calculator and you know how to do a custom base, you're welcome to do that. But first, before I go to Desmos, I'm going to just divide by 52. here. So now I'm going to take this thing, all of this, and show you how to do that in Desmos. So you'll want to go to desmos.com backslash calculator. Okay, so desmos.com slash calculator. And then down here where you see this keypad, you want to click. It opens up several different menus here. You want to come all the way to the right and click on functions. And then this menu opens and you've got four menus to choose from, trig, stats, distribution, um, you want this MISC for miscellaneous, click on that. And then down here, you have two options for log. Well, you actually have three. Here's LN, natural log, log base E. This log, you notice how it doesn't have a base. That means it's log base 10. You want this one that says log base A. Since that base is a variable, it's implying that you can change it to whatever you want. That's what we want. We want to customize our base. So I click on that. And then coming over here to the left on the calculator side, it gave me log and you see the cursors blinking right below and to the right. That's the subscript where we're going to enter our custom base. So that was um, one point zero zero one three seven. And then and you want to click in the parentheses or move your arrow to the right and enter your value, your log value, one point four three eight nine. All right, so it's calculated that for me, but I also want to divide, divide that whole thing by 52. And so here's my answer, approximately five. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. So again, the website there was desmos.com backslash calculator. You want the functions menu, and then you want the log base A menu. All right, so back at this problem, our answer is T is approximately five years. And then we have, so that was con, um, con, compounded. We have one more formula to talk about and it's continuously compounded. So going back to the note sheet, Simple interest is calculated once. 
compounded interest is calculated many times and continuously compounded is calculated over and over and over. This is a little bit of a theoretical idea. So whereas simple and compounded interest had discrete amounts of that it, the interest was calculated like once, twice, three times, whatever. Continuously compounded is like, it's just continuously being calculated over and over. While you're breathing, who knows? It's just being calculated innumerable amount of times. And what happens in that case is it converges to a certain value in this formula, which is that E. And we've talked about E in the past. Remember, E is not a variable. It represents the number 2.7, blah, 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 forever. It repeats, it never ends. Um, we've talked about that before. In the same way that pi is a symbol that represents 3.14, et cetera, um, it's not a variable. E is like that. And everything else in this formula stands for the exact same thing as before. So we don't have any new additions to write here, but um, so we can go straight to the practice problem. And we're gonna do practice uh, problem number 31. So I want you to take a minute and pause. So here's 31. And I want you to try this entire thing on your own. Every skill you need for this problem, we have already talked about. So you pause the video and come back after you've tried it. All right, so here's the formula we're using. A equals PE to the RT. So A is 25,000. And equals P1750. E to the R. R is 4.5%. We need to move the decimal two places to the left. And T stays T because that's what we're looking for. And a few weeks ago, when we talked about solving exponential equations, we said you have to isolate the exponential term. That is this piece, E to the 0 0.045 T. So we isolate it by dividing the 1750 first. And on the left, that gives me 1.42857. And on the right, e to the 0 0.05t. And just like in the last example, when the variable is in the exponent, exponent form or place, you need to re convert to log form. And we're going to use lasso to do that. So we start with the base, e. Loop around to the opposite side. And that gives me log base E of 1.42857 equals 0 0.045T. Divide both sides by 0 0.045. And remember that log base E, that's natural log. So you can do any log calculator. You don't necessarily have to go to Desmos for that. You just would choose the natural log function. Do natural log 1.42857, enter, then divide by 0 0.045, and this would give you 7.9 years. And you're done.